Hi there. In this lecture, we're going to see an amazing looking smooth game of Bobby Fischer against Joseph Cooper in the 1959 Zurich tournament round four. Fischer kicked off with e4. We have a Sicilian defense. Knight f3. Joseph Cooper plays knight c6. We have d4, c takes, knight takes, d4, knight f6, knight c3, d6, bishop c4, e6, bishop b3, bishop e7, white castles, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, black castles, king h1, and now black plays b6, so not wasting time with a6, not wasting any time, putting immediate pressure on e4. This is a very interesting plan. f4, bishop b7, f5, and now e5. The queen drops back, and now h6, which prevents the possibility sometimes of bishop g5 taking f6 to try and dominate this strategically important central square. Now we see maybe this is a calculated risk by Fisher. He maybe he kind of knew this was potentially uh, a little bit risky. He plays the move rook f3. I mean, it's got risk and reward associated with it, it seems. A more stable move would be knight d5, just keeping control of d5. And the very, a very significant tactical point is associated with this. Even though this, this looks like a very dull way of playing it, it's a kind of safer way, it seems, in one key respect. It seems as though this is very nice and logical, rook f3. But black plays now rook c8, and the rook indulges in another move, rook h3. Here, it's already, it's kind of potentially misplaced, but it's having to prove this without showing the upside of this rook left to h3. So what is the downside here? If instead knight d5 had play, been played, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes, e takes, bishop f6, black is simply doing better. You know, that semi-open c file, black's king is safe. And, it, you know, black's position is easier to play. So rook h3 goes all in. But is it burning some boats? We see a critical mistake from black, king h7 here. And this starts to be hugely now in white's favour after king h7, which basically aligns the king with the rook kind of dangerously. But otherwise it looks dangerous in any case. However, instead of king h7, can you can you see if there's a very interesting move you would consider, at least in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you consider playing with black? Okay, it seems rook takes c3 is actually an exceptionally good exchange sack in this position. There are a few key factors. The rook is potentially misplaced. If b takes, knight takes e4, this is a huge knight on e4, and after d5, the bishop's kind of blunted as well. This position has great prospects for black. When you evaluate an exchange sack, and often there is a lot of evaluation, you need to see the trends, the general trends in the position. If you're going to get one or two pawns and it's an upward trend. It often makes exchange sacrifices very, very important to try and make use of. And in this scenario, this is a fictional scenario, black would actually be doing very, very well. Uh, our latest technology indicates, you know, this this is actually better for black in this position. The rook is misplaced, the structure is damaged, the bishop is blunted. But it does take a certain amount of bravery to play such an exchange sacrifice uh, based on instinct and evaluation rather than more precise kind of cold calculation one needs to sort of be aware that the prospects of the pieces are pretty good here there's an upward trend and have faith that that will that will work a lot of players under 2200 do not in, indulge in exchange sacrifices for this very reason there's a, there's a lot of evaluation and kind of faith in the upward trend needed but here yeah it does seem very very promising even though technically you know, white's the exchange up, there is compensating factors, clearly. So also you might be wondering, well, what about queen takes c3? Again, even without the structural damage, this situation with d5 is very, very promising for black. The knight on e4 is actually a very, very well-placed central knight. It's very, very strong. Black's got a very good grip on the position here. But in the game, okay, we'll go back to the game, king h7. So it suggests this might be a little bit on the ambitious side if we're taking it to the limit, if we're taking the accuracy to the limit. So we see Fisher playing bishop e3, we see queen d7, and now 
knight d5 bishop takes d5 here it's it is very dangerous if a6 then bishop takes h6 knight takes f6 and queen e3 what is black doing here the thing is there's f6 here or if bishop g5 there's queen takes g5 so this is this is a huge problem and that's f6 here and this position is just better for white so in the game bishop takes we see bishop takes knight takes e takes and now there's a big threat of f6 check so black blocks that but guess what fisher plays here if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay bishop takes h6 this totally justifies the rook being on h3 so g takes and we see queen e3 and now bishop g7 again if you know bishop g5 queen takes g5 and then we're going to be mating so bishop g7 and now f6 yeah f6 we have rook h8 if bishop takes f6 queen takes and then queen h queen h7 this checkmate so rook h8 but now really strong reinforcement rook f1 we see queen b5 queen f3 and this is just crushing absolutely of the rook c4 queen f5 check and the game ended here so it's a sweet 25 mover if the game continued king g8 f takes g7 and then queen f7 for example queen takes f7 is checkmate so on the surface a sweet little game but did Fisher take a calculated risk? Maybe he was aware it was slightly risky, this rook lift, but he thought he'd play it anyway. It does take some courage to play an intuitive exchange sacrifice. So it's very interesting. Maybe it's it's interesting also that black has kind of optimized the play. There was no waste of a move of a6 and b5. It was immediately putting pressure on e4 with the quick vincetto kind of accelerated Queen's Bishop Fianchetto. So in, in line with this, it's like, yeah, E4 was asking for it. But yeah, so this seems to be the critical mistake. Rook takes C3 was the best way for black to try and at least, uh, you know, get a very good looking position with good prospects. Okay, I'll take you back to the uh, game end position. Very interesting game. Okay, thanks very much. Hi guys, if you enjoyed this video lecture, you might want to get more at my course, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link. You know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.